Hi, this is the YouTube channel Optics Realm, an optics blog or video blog. And today we're going to do tutorial, optics tutorial 12, stops and pupils. The goal of this video is to understand what aperture stops and how they relate to pupils and how they relate to an imaging system. So first off, the, what is the aperture stop? The aperture stop is the one aperture in the optical system that limits the on-axis beam. Now, just looking at this one ray trace here, <clears throat> you can kind of tell that the aperture stop is here because all these other apertures are larger than the, the footprint, the blue rays. And this could be, uh, this aperture stop could be anything. It could be a piece of metal with a hole in it. It could be an iris. It could be an optical surface or a lens. So the aperture stop also limits the ray bundle for the off-axis beams for no vignetting. So here's a case where the, this lens does not vignette at all. And you can see if I'm, I've blown up the edge of this aperture stop here, all the different fields, which are different colors, they all go through the edge of the aperture stop. Now an advanced topic is pupil aberrations. We've not even talked about a lot of imaging aberrations yet, but there will be pupil aberrations that skew these, uh, these rays here. Here's some examples of an entrance pupil. A lot of people want to say, well, I'll look at the front of the lens and that front lens is the entrance pupil. And that's not really the case. The top example is a singlet. And in the case of a singlet, the aperture stop is generally where that lens is. And so you can judge the entrance, the optical system's entrance pupil diameter by the diameter of that lens in this case. As opposed to the bottom case where you've got a fisheye lens, the front lens is huge, but the entrance pupil is not huge. It's tiny. You've got, um, this is essentially an inverse telephoto and the entrance pupil is buried within the system. And I, I'll tell you what a, a, an entrance pupil is here coming up. The key concept to understanding pupils is you trace the chief ray. Wherever that chief ray equals zero, that is where the stop or the pupil is located. Now that, just because you're looking at a chief ray and it doesn't appear to cross the axis, you can trace that chief ray forwards or backwards to see where it crosses the optical axis. And that is the location of the pupil. And this occurs in all spaces where the stop is, object space, image space, in between lenses, inside of lenses even. So let's go ahead and talk about um, at the entrance pupil and a double gauss. And I like the double gauss because most camera lenses are a derivative of it. The aperture stop is buried in the optical system and it's not near, uh, usually not near a, an optical surface so you can make it an iris to vary your F number. So what we're gonna do, and, and again, this is uh, the buried, buried aperture stop. Here's object space, here is image space. And I've also drawn the chief ray. This chief ray, you can see where it's zero, it, well, by definition, it goes through the optical axes where the stop is. But we're going to look where the entrance pupil is. So I said wherever the chief ray crosses the axes is the location of the pupil. So this may appear it doesn't cross the axes. Well, if we trace this ray forward, this is the dash green line. We trace this ray forward where it crosses this optical axis that is where your entrance pupil is located. Now to get the size of the entrance pupil, you take your marginal rays and you trace them, you know, trace virtual rays, in this case virtual rays, to that location. Now since we're collimated, the size of the entrance, the entrance pupil diameter is the size, same size as the diameter out here. So that is how you find your entrance pupil. From a black box standpoint, if you don't know what's going on inside your optical system, you, you can view the system as a black box. So this black box, you've got who knows how many lenses in it. And you can simulate how the, the bundles of, bundle of rays move versus field by knowing where your entrance pupil is located. In this case, the entrance pupil is inside the optical system and it's virtual. Now I'm also going to show I'm showing here these input 
fields, these shaded input fields, on top of the ray trace showing where the entrance pupil is located. If you're calculating some perspectives, you need to know the location of the entrance pupil, not necessarily your front principal plane. The exit pupil, we're going to repeat the process. The exit pupil is the view of the aperture stop as seen from image space. So we've got a, tra we got a chief ray here. We're going to backwards ray trace it like this. Here's the dashed line and where it crosses the axes. That is your exit pupil. And again, to find the size of the exit pupil, we take the marginal rays and we trace the marginal rays. In this case, we're backwards ray tracing and they're going to be virtual rays. They trace and we trace them back to the exit pupil location and we get the size of the exit pupil. And again, from a black box standpoint, you can view the exit pupil as just some point out here where your cones of light versus field come to uh, originate from and come to focus on your on your image plane. And I'll overlay this, these same shaded cones on top of the ray trace. You can see your entrance pupil comes back here. Um, sorry, the exit pupil is back here. The exit pupil is important uh, important location to reference your relative illumination calculations. If you want to know um, how uniform the illumination is, in other words, if you've got, you're looking at a white background, the corners may appear darker on your image plane, and that's called relative illumination. So uh, you use uh, this, we'll cover later, uh, the radiometric calculation is usually cosine to the fourth, and that cosine to the fourth is the angle defined by this chief ray relative. So the location of the exit pupil is very important for that. Let's put it all together. Here's a black box. You've got a virtual entrance pupil, a virtual exit pupil, and you can see how the input beams come and how the output beams come. Characterizes fully your optical, well, characterizes the footprints in your optical system. And we'll put this on top of the, the ray trace, and you can see that it's uh, um, where the entrance and entrance and exit pupils are located. Now I want to talk quickly about pupil magnification or pupil ratio, and that's simply the diameter of the exit pupil to the diameter of the entrance pupil. I'm not going to get into this in great detail yet, but this is used in photography for close-up imaging. I put the definitions at the end of the presentation today so we you can understand what I'm talking about. Again, just in review, the aperture stop is the one aperture, single aperture in the optical system that limits the on-axis bundle of rays. A pupil is the image of the aperture spot, aperture stop in any given optical space. If it's in the uh, object space, it's called the exit pupil. If it's in the image space, it's called the exit pupil. And pupil magnification is defined by the exit pupil to entrance pupil diameter. Now I want to talk about telecentrating the lens, or make it telecentric or telecenter the lens. I've heard a lot of different nomenclature for this. But the concept is we're going to insert a lens right here to collimate these chief rays or to place the exit pupil at infinity. So here's the concept. I've just overlaid a red lens. And how do you do this? Well, what happens is this lens, if you make this lens focal length, the distance to where the exit pupil is, you're essentially collimating, you're collimating your chief ray. Now, I've also shown the cones come to focus a little bit shorter because this is adding power to the optical system. So when th there are some pitfalls for, for doing this. Not only does it change the optical system, but it's going to change the balance of the spherical aberration. We've not discussed spherical aberration, but needless to say, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that later, but what that's going to do is reduce your imaging, uh, the ability to image well. And one final note on pupils. If you've ever looked in a microscope, you, you look into the optics, into the glass where the eyepiece is, and you can see this black field. And if you move your head around, you'll see like a little window pane. And you bring your eye close to that window pane, and what you're doing is you're matching the pupil of your eye to the exit pupil of the microscope. 
So that, that is a hardcore example of what a pupil is. And we also see them in binoculars. Uh, they're quite um, noticeable in a rifle scope because the exit pupil is pulled way back. So when you, you fire your rifle, you're not going to get hit in the eye with the, the, the scope. Here's the homework. I will also place this on the, uh, my webpage, opticsrealm.com, under the video topics. Thanks for tuning in. If you have anything relevant to this topic, please post down below. You can also get a hold of me at these site, these other uh, channels. Uh, I've been swamped. I'm not keeping up with it. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you tuning in. Have a good one.